I'm Fred Destin from Excel. I'm Mike Chalfin from Mosaic. Richard Muir, head uh, and as of today, general partner with Open Ocean. Fantastic. And Bruce Uppen with Forbes. Um, so we all we talked a lot about earlier today about the state of uh, European startups and what the role that VCs have to play. Now we have three of you on the stage, so let's color it in a little bit about highs and lows, what needs to happen, what you're doing to help build the startup economy here. Richard, why don't you uh, just talk about what, what's going on? Sure, sure. So um, it's a super exciting day for me. Um, I've got a, a track record in, in building software companies um, over the last 20 years, and actually have encountered both of these fine fellows over the last um, 20 years. And uh, today is my f you know, first day as a venture capitalist uh, with Open Ocean. Um, and you know, I think it boils down to one word, is that the VC's got to work. You know, I'm an entrepreneur you know, uh, at heart, and everybody knows if you're in the startup world, you've got to you know, knuckle down and, and hustle and make stuff happen. Um, we're building something just incredibly exciting across Europe. Um, and every single VC that comes onto the scene, or new fund like Open Ocean that gets uh, raised, which is um, actually a 100 million uh, euro fund, uh, is an important you know, piece of that. But we, we need to get in there and be uh, in each of the hubs right across Europe, um, as well as the big ones like London, where I'm going to be opening a, an office for the, for the partners. And uh, we also need to be getting out there and, and, and understanding um, you know, what the guys are up to out there in, building in terms of building companies and how we can help and uh, do that work. So that's, I mean, hustle and work, that's the bottom line. All right, Mike. Thanks, um, so we set up Mosaic Ventures last year uh, as a Series A fund. Uh, our perception is that uh, in the European market there's a lot of seed capital and um, you know, for companies that are really ramping, there's late stage capital, but at that early stage, you know, there, there isn't enough institutional capital. So just the, the starting point is capital is a good, is a good start. Um, our view is that you know, we're there to support founders. We, you know, we've got your back as a founder. Um, and what we want to do with the founders we, we partner with is um, you know, sort of establish what is the single most important thing that can make the biggest difference to that, comp to that company. And then, as Richard said, hustle and find, you know, find that best resource and apply it to their company. So our job is to you know, make sure that the most important priorities are, are, are being set and agree that with the founders. And, and then if, it's, if, we, if we can help bring the very best resource in the world to that problem, that's our job. Do you find, do you, when you talk to founders, do you find that, that they say that VCs in Europe are not doing enough to have the back of these entrepreneurs as maybe, say, the venture community in the United States? Um, I think that would be putting it a little harshly. I think it's a mixed bag. You know, there are VCs that are, that are hustling, and you know, it's, I think three on the stage, and there are, there, are, there are others. So it's something that we are collectively as an industry beginning to do more of, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not universal, but then quality is not universally even in Sil Silicon Valley either. Right. I right. mean, I, so last year we spent, um, I think we did 800 hotel nights in 25 countries. Um, for the first time, we have companies in Spain, for example, we have four companies in the portfolio in Spain. We have one in Holland, um, which, you know, are geographies where we never had any investment. And so it's flourishing everywhere from the entrepreneur level. But what I find is the VC community is still a little bit insular. Um, so, you know, if you're building a success story in France, you know, kind of people want it to be a French success story. And whenever the entrepreneurs go to the US or they go to the UK to raise capital, there's always a bit of defensiveness, like the local market's losing out. Yeah. And I think the more we can get away from that mentality, the better off we are. Um, I also think the angels are very disparate. And the angel networks, and the, they really don't talk to each other. And maybe they should all get on angel list, or they should all find a way to collaborate and get visibility onto what each other is doing. And then we have some shining examples like uh, Cloud9, uh, out of Germany, Christoph Jans, where this guy is just thematically looking at marketplaces and SaaS, and he invests everywhere. And these people are building the bridges. So I, I think there are some shining examples, but there's a lot of insularity. And it's almost the entrepreneurs are showing the example right. you know, by being very international from day one. I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we need to, to solve that, and we need to get to work to do it. And I couldn't agree more that there's this just incredible range of companies being built right across Europe. Um, I've worked with companies in Slovenia and you know, Sweden and Germany uh, just in the last couple of years in, you know, in cloud infrastructure, in 
in, in blockchain. They're doing super exciting things. And you know, back to the point of you know, what are the VCs currently not doing quite enough of? Yeah. I think it's a combination of, of being uh, respecting uh, the fact that entrepreneurs are the ones that are going to drive the, the businesses to the greatest heights, uh, and the, the being really intelligent of the, about how you make space for that. Um, I know it's Fred, something, uh, something Fred has blogged about actually over the, over the years. Uh, so doing, in a sense, kind of less there. Um, in order to be more effective, and then doing much more on, on helping with you know, the talent, helping with business development, helping with the, the sales, that side of thing, opening the Rolodex, than uh, on average, should we say, folks have done across Europe over the last couple of decades. Not including you, Mike, though, of course, you were on my board, so you were extremely <laughs> He's effective. Fine. He's just fine. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, but you've got to pick the founder right. There you go. <laughs> you think, you think when you find a founder who's not thinking ambitiously enough, what, what do you tell them? And, and what, can you have them talk to someone else uh, who is? Or? So, I, look, I think our job very often when, especially with European founders, when they're heads down executing and you can stop them in their tracks and you say, hang on, look at how well this is working. You can now think about taking this to 20 countries or 50 countries. And the founders are like, well, OK, you know, how do I make that work? And then you offer them access to growth capital, whether it's Insight or whether it's some of the new hedge funds. I think one of the roles we can play is to help these guys sort of almost stop in execution, take their head away, and, you know, take their head up and say, oh my god, I have a business that's working. You know, help me think about it at scale. And then I've been really surprised. I come on Deliveroo. Deliveroo is a company that's probably the fastest scaling I've ever been involved with. Well, the whole board, so Will Shu, Martin at Index, myself, everybody's like, how can we go three times faster when we're already thinking that we're running at maximum speed? It's like every time we hit a new, a new level of efficiency and velocity and scale, we're like, OK, what's the next stage? You know, how do we think like Uber? And I can tell you five years ago when I left for the US, it was not the case. It would never have happened that you would kind of think that way. So I think it's happening. And I think the venture community, if people can let go of control, the obsession of control of the entrepreneur, and just think about enablement, right. then you know, it's happening. And I think we're seeing the new practitioners, you know, the Axels and indexes of this world are thinking that way. And, and, and a lot of the entrepreneurs are thinking that way. So I think we're finally kind of letting go of our shackles. You know, and yeah. It's just like reaching for the sky, right? right. Like, one, one of the things that uh, we try to do, and I'm sure others do as well, is to identify you know, which entrepreneurs have it in them to think big. And um, you know, it's obviously when an entrepreneur is executing, it can be very, very narrow. But you know, from the beginning, pre-investment, to ask the question, if money was no object, like, what would your strategy be? What's your dream? What's your vision? You know, yes, it may take seven years, 10 years to get there. But you know, let's plot that path rather than just plot the path to the next money. So you know, you, we, we can help uh, raise their sights a little right. bit and equally then help make sure that, that you know, the, the practical, you know, logical path that they're on sort of short term doesn't compromise the long term vision. That's good. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. We're out of time. Appreciate so this it. was the shortest VC panel in history. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, thank you. Normally <laughs> have a great day. Thank you, Bruce. Easily. <laughs> All right. Thanks, All right. Thank you. Thanks, Fred. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs>